Reed Ribble. Gentleman from Wisconsin, how are you? I'm, I'm doing great, Mr. Chairman. Ranking member, thank and, you. And I look forward to meeting you. I, I, uh, you have a, we have an office visit, I think, in the, in the offing, too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this morning. So I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I'm, I'm not going to uh, go through my testimony word for word. You've got written copies. I'm going to also try to help you get back on schedule here a little bit. Uh, I, want, I wanted to talk to you about, about LCS, not from the position of whether this is the right ship for the Navy or isn't the right ship for the Navy. I think Department of Defense, the, the Department of the Navy, and House Armed Services on both the House and Senate will make determinations on the appropriateness of this vessel. But I want to talk about specifically is, is the fiscal year 2015 block by acquisition strategy. If the strategy was correct then, and I believe it is because we saw a ship that originally cost nearly $700 million be driven down in cost around $350 million, nearly half of the original, original price. If the block buy strategy is broken for fiscal year 14 or fiscal year 15, we have, the, we have the likelihood that the Navy, therefore the taxpayer, will pay significantly more for the remaining ships under the contract. And that therein is the rub, is that if we're going to, in times of tough fiscal decision making, it seems to me that the best decision is to not break a contract and go from four ships, which is the current contract, to three, thus raising the, the cost of the remaining 10 or 12, doesn't seem to me to be a very practical economic strategy. And so I'm, I'm here today requesting that the, the Appropriations Committee consider leaving that four ship block in fiscal year 15 so that the contract itself isn't broken. Secondarily to that, Mr. Chairman, it, it goes to a, a broader discussion about American shipbuilding capabilities. My shipyard in Marinette, Wisconsin, as well as other shipyards that do uh, military contracting, often invest tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars of private investment to prepare for contracts based on promises given by the federal government to these localities. And in this case, my shipyard spent nearly $100 million of, of their own private investment. If contracts get broken, and I, I understand changes in defense strategy and changes in, in, in terms of agreements as, as the nation shifts and moves and we learn things, um, but we still must be very careful about uh, private future investment. If we discourage or disincent private future investment, into this nation's shipbuilding capacity, we, in essence, strike a blow into the nation's defense. And so, so therefore, I think we need to move very cautiously on any time that we're going to actually break a contract. I get, I get having contracts in and I get making changes, but I'm very concerned about this nation's shipbuilding capacity. We've got an extraordinarily uh, gifted group of workers in, it, at Marinette Marine in Marinette, Wisconsin, who are building the littoral combat ship. And this was a ship that, quite frankly, Secretary Gates, Secretary Panetta, Secretary Panetta was just up at the shipyard a few months ago, um, Secretary Mabus have all spoken glowingly of, and in recent war games, the Navy itself spoke glowingly of the ship itself. Um, so it, it's a ship that apparently they wanted. It's a ship that we should continue to build for the time being as long as it meets the national defense strategy. And it is certainly from an economic standpoint a ship that we shouldn't break a contract with in fiscal year 15 where we reverse the trend of cost savings and make the ship that they're going to buy anyway more expensive. And so as you guys weigh and measure all these things, and uh, I can tell you it's during this time of year, I'm glad I'm not an appropriator, uh, but I want to encourage you to cons consider what that, what that block buy and strategic buy program means to our shipbuilding capacity and meeting the promises that we've given, um, but also make sure that we're buying these ships at the best possible cost for the time that we buy them. And with that, uh, well, I, I'll, well, th I'll thank yield you back. For, for being here and articulating so well uh, what, what's so important here. We, we don't want to lose that industrial base and, and incredibly qualified people, no matter where they are, but certainly recognize the role right. of historical role of Wisconsin. I appreciate you summarizing your testimony. I appreciate that you use steel to build those ships in Wisconsin. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, your concern about the industrial base, particularly shipbuilding, uh, I think the chairman, all of us on the uh, committee are very concerned about it. Uh, the one question I have is, uh, Vilas County is in Mr. Duffy's district? Or yes, it is. It used it to is. be in my, my district. My mother's from Eagle River. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. a beautiful place. Great state, Wisconsin. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for your uh, concern. Yeah, it's, it's good to be you. here. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you, Reed.